The film's concept is set in the far future, when the Earth has become uninhabitable. Humans must discover another planet that they may inhabit. That is when the United Ranger Corps was established. The United Ranger Corps is a worldwide military campaign to evacuate the globe. The Rangers oversee the establishment of humanity's future home. Nova Prime. The departure comes to an end as humanity settles on a new, pure planet called Nova Prime. The only difficulty is that the planet is already inhabited to drive away human settlements. The residents of Nova Prime unleash hideous beasts known as Ursus. Ursus are physically blind. Yet they can identify people by sniffing the hormones that the human brain emits when afraid. The predators can detect fear in people and attack. They have put humanity at risk of extinction once again. One thousand years later, the rangers who assisted humanity in escaping the Earth created a strategy to defeat the Ursins. Cypher Rage, the chief commander develops a method known as ghosting that allows him to attack the Ursus bravely while being nearly invisible to them. The Rangers use this approach to defeat the Ursus and live happily on Nova Prime. The scene shifts to several youths preparing to be Rangers in Prime Nova's human community. Kitai, Commander Cypher's son, is one of the ambitious teenagers. Kitai's older sister, Senshi, was murdered while attempting to defend him from an Ursa. Therefore, he trains tirelessly every day to become a ranger and combat them. On examination day, the commander, the assessor, informs Kitai that his exam results are excellent, but his field activity is ordinary. As a result, he gets passed over for the position of ranger. Kitai retaliates. But the commander terminates the call. The next scenario shows the chief commander, Cypher, returning home from his voyage to another planet. He approaches his wife, Faya, and welcomes her. Cypher asks Kitai about his training as the family is eating dinner one night. Kitai responds that he hasn't been chosen and Cypher merely encourages him to try harder. Kitai angrily gets up from the table prompting Cypher to shout at him to return to his seat. After dinner, Cypher informs Faya that he is heading on his last trip to Ifitos to teach several rangers. He is planning to retire after the trip. Faya wants him to bring Kitai with him so he may learn how to be a ranger. She confesses that Kitai blames himself for the death of his older sister, Senshi. The next day, Cypher and Kitai prepare to go on the adventure. Before they go, Cypher is approached by a ranger who has lost one of his legs in combat. The ranger praises Cypher for saving his life and salutes him with his foot. Kitai is fascinated by the commotion and admires how the other rangers treat his father. The rangers are also transporting a captive Ursa aboard their spacecraft for use in training. Everyone boarded the spacecraft and it eventually took off. Halfway through their journey, Cypher invites Kitai to strap in and take a break like the others. However, due to the uncomfortable seat, he does not fall asleep. So he walks to the restricted area where the Earth is stored. A ranger then stops him and mocks him for being too invasive. A troop of rangers permits him to approach the captive Ursa to determine whether he is as courageous as his father. However, the Ursa smells Katai's fear and growls. Just then, Cypher awakens and uses the technology in his ring to verify the ship's gravitational attraction. He senses something is wrong and tells the rangers to secure all the goods. Kitai returns to his seat and bickles in. Cypher then asks the pilot where the closest asteroid shower is. The pilots initially do not detect one. But as time passes, they discover a large asteroid shower approaching. It strikes the ship, forcing it to shake violently and cause significant damage. The rangers panic, 
and Kitai is the only one strapped in. He hyperventilates, terrified of what is going to occur. Cypher instructs the pilots to proceed to the wormhole, which they eventually reach outside the asteroid shower. However, the spacecraft is severely damaged and cannot continue for an extended period, so they must land on the next human-friendly planet. While hunting for such a planet, the pilot arrives on Earth. Cypher is hesitant to return to their former home since the Earth has become a Class 1 quarantine planet since humanity left, but he has no other option. Cypher approaches his kid and calms him down as the spacecraft crashes crashes to the ground at an unmanageable speed. Kitai had visions of when Enersi attacked them, and his sister Senshi died. Just suddenly, the ship begins to break apart, leading everyone surrounding Kitai to collapse. Finally, Kitai becomes unconscious and crashes to the ground. Humans have returned to Earth after a thousand years. After a while, he awakens and looks around to see the corpses of his fellow rangers. He also notices his father lying weakly on the ground and accepts him. Tokadai's amazement, Cypher awakens and welcomes him. However, both of his legs are seriously wounded, rendering him unable to stand. Cypher inquires as to how many people survive, only to discover that everyone but them has died. Furthermore, the back section of the spacecraft is missing, indicating that the abducted Ursa has landed somewhere else. Cypher thinks the creature may have died as a result of the accident, but cautions Kitai. Cypher orders Kitai to get an emergency beacon that can be used to transmit signals to a rescue group in Prime Nova, but they are disappointed to learn that the beacon has been completely wrecked. Kitai then leads Cypher to the control panel, which is still operational. Cypher then determines the position of the ship's second beacon, which is located in the tail portion. A holographic indication indicates that the second beacon has landed a hundred kilometers from its present position. They will be unable to return home until they recover the beacon. However, since Cypher is unable to move, Kitai must do it on his own. Cypher tells him of the Earth's monsters, which have developed to destroy humans during the last thousand years. Kadai's journey will not be simple, but Cypher will be monitoring him and his traces from the control panel at all times. Cypher gives Kitai his weapon, a risk communicator and six capsules of a fluid that improves oxygen intake, allowing him to breathe in our slow oxygen environment. He instructs Kitai to consume the pills at regular intervals before setting out on his expedition. Kitai begins his quest by climbing a messy slope and eventually reaching the peak. He is curious to observe so many different lifestyles on Earth. The planet is presently experiencing dramatic temperature fluctuations, which make the evenings too chilling to bear. As a result, Cypher advises Kitai to visit the hot spots created by geothermal energy every night to stay warm. Following that, Cypher examines his legs and discovers that they are badly wounded. He takes a pain reliever temporarily, which causes him to get vague. By midday, Kitai had arrived in the jungle, and Cypher spotted something approaching him on the monitor. He notifies Kitai about the beast and requests that he remain still. The animal turns out to be a highly advanced, predatory monkey. Kitai becomes terrified and throws a rock at the animal, drawing a bunch of monkeys that pursue him. As Kitai flees for his life, a worried Cypher directs him. The monkeys abandon him once he dives into a river. When Kitai eventually stops running, he discovers a dangerous leech attached to him. He quickly removes the parasite, but the beast has already left poison in his body. Kitai begins to lose his eyesight, and his body stops moving. Cypher tells him to get an antidote from his medical bag. Kitai administered the dosage and fell asleep immediately. After a while, Cypher awakens Kitai, 
stating that the temperature is rapidly lowering as night falls. He has to go to a hot place soon if he doesn't want to freeze to death. Kitai awakens, fully recovered from the leech's poison, and moves ahead. Meanwhile, Cypher conducts makeshift surgery on his legs to improve their condition, knowing that he doesn't have much time left. At that point, he recalls wishing his daughter a happy birthday just before she died. Kitai eventually arrives at the first hot spot. He examines his equipment for the day and notices that two liquid capsules that increase his oxygen level have been destroyed. This indicates he'll have to get to his goal faster. Knowing that Cypher would ask him to return if he discovers the broken vials, Kitai lies and claims everything is okay. At night, Kitai asks Cypher how he initially developed the ghosting method. Cypher explains that he was on a run when Ursula merged in front of him. Cypher froze in fear, and Ursa blasted its grasp directly through Cypher's shoulder, causing both of them to collapse into a river down the cliff. At the bottom of the river, the Ursa tried to drown Cypher. Cypher had accepted his fate and was no longer terrified. As a result, the Ursa was unable to see him, allowing him to kill it. While listening to the narrative, Kitai falls asleep. The next day, he resumes his journey. Halfway through the day, Cypher notices clues to Ursa's presence in the region. Kitai arrives at a large waterfall that he must cross to achieve his goals. Cypher instructs him to check his supplies, and he is unhappy to find that he only has two vials of liquid oxygen remaining. Kitai, humiliated, claims he can reach the tail with only two, but Cypher orders him to cancel the mission. Kitai had a flashback to the day his sister, Senshi, died, and Ursa had attacked their house. And Cypher, as usual, was on a mission elsewhere. Senshi had placed her brother within a glass sphere so that the Ursa couldn't smell his fear and save his life. Kitai watched his sister's death in front of him that day and he continued to blame himself for it. Back in the present, Kitai confronts Cypher, saying that he is not a coward. Cypher attempts to calm him down, but Kitai leaps over the cliff out of wrath. He utilizes his outfit to direct the path of his fall. When he believes he can make it to the bottom, a big bird strikes him and destroys his communicator. Cypher is now unable to reach Kitai. A bit later, Kitai awakens in the bird's nest, surrounded by chicks. Before he can escape, a group of panthers attacks them all. The mother bird battles the one on top of the nest, while Kitai fights the panther with it. By the conclusion of the conflict, the bird's chicks had all died. Kitai flees the situation as it attempts to regain them in frustration. Meanwhile, Cypher searches for Kitai using his satellite monitors but discovers two rangers impaled on a tree. The technology detects the presence of an Ursa in the environment. Kitai, unknowingly, spends the night in a cave. Without his father guiding him, he must depend on his memories to reach the ship's tail. He drew a map on the wall and planned to follow it. The next morning, he resumes his journey but is terrorized by the same bird that follows him everywhere. He is having difficulty breathing around midday, so he takes in his final bottle of oxygen. Then, to get to the tail faster, he makes a raft out of wood and continues his journey. After a while, Kitai falls asleep and has a dream in which his sister tells him he is almost there. He gets up just before the temperature fluctuation begins and walks about, seeking a hot spot. He can't discover one without Cypher's help. However, the temperature goes extremely low, and everything around him freezes. Kitai falls asleep on the ground, and we see something dragging him to a warm, secure glimpse. Kitai awakens the next morning to find that the bird has saved his life. It had covered him in leaves and twigs, treating him like one of his chicks. Kitai praises the bird but discovers that it is already dead. However, with little time to spend, 
He continues onward and eventually reaches the ship's tail. He discovers a bottle of liquid oxygen and quickly takes it in, reviving him to some degree. Then he notices that the Earth is not where it should be. Kitai receives the signal and uses the tail panel to communicate with Cypher. Cypher who is barely totally aware, is overjoyed to find his son alive. However, Kitai is unable to hear him due to a technological problem. Kitai then attempts to use the beacon, but it fails owing to atmospheric interference. Cypher encourages him to try again from a new position, but Kitai becomes even more anxious since he cannot hear him. But after a while, Kitai notices a nearby volcano and decides to try utilizing the beacon from the top. However, problems arise when the missing Ursa locates Kitai and detects his fear. Cypher sees this on the monitor and becomes concerned about him. Kitai, on the other hand, realizes that the thing is pursuing him and begins to flee. The Ursa attacks Kitai but he saves himself by leaping into a body of water and climbing a mountain. The temperature suddenly drops, causing Kitai to fall to the ground. Cypher falls asleep as a result of his injuries. The Ursa approaches Kitai, recalling his father's words. He recalls that fear is unreal and exists only in his mind. Just then, the monster goes straight by Kitai unaware of him. He has overcome his fear and is now capable of ghosting the beast. Kitai effortlessly defeats the beast with his newfound bravery. He then uses the beacon to alert the rescue crew. Kitai is next seen aboard a rescue ship. He steps forward and everyone applauds. Cypher is lying on a bed, getting treated for his injuries. When he sees his son, he orders the rangers to stand him up and honor Kitai in true ranger tradition. The film closes with the father and son hugging, as the spacecraft departs toward Nova Prime.